Hey y'all, this is Karen Peters with RenovatedFaith.com and I am so excited to show you how my cabinets turned out after painting them. So painting cabinets is not easy, but in this tutorial, I'm going to show you the most effective and efficient way to paint your own kitchen cabinets and to save thousands of dollars doing it. Uh, I will show you step-by-step step what to do in this video and also uh, in the blog post so that you don't only have the most beautiful cabinets with a gorgeous smooth finish, but you also have cabinets that will last you for years and years to come. And I hate to say it, but it happens that someone will paint their cabinets and maybe because they didn't do enough prep work, they find that their cabinets are peeling and then they have to go through the whole process all over again. And that's what I'm going to prevent uh, by helping you step-by-step step to paint your cabinets the right way so it's done once and it's done well. So, because you know that I like to research things, I have tested and reviewed the best paint, the best brushes, the best roller, and I've talked to several cabinet refinishers about the best techniques. So, I have you all set and ready to go to paint your own cabinets and while it's not an easy process, it will be so satisfying when you're done and have saved thousands of dollars by doing it yourself. Uh, be sure to watch the video and look at the post that goes with this and then uh, check out a free download called the Cabinet Painting Roadmap. It is going to walk you through the whole process with painting the boxes, when to do what, when to flip the doors, when to put your brush in the refrigerator. That will make sense when you see this video and look at the blog post. And it'll just walk you through the process step by step so you can get it done efficiently and effectively. And don't forget to watch the reveal at the end of this video. I'm so excited to show you how my cabinets turned out and thank you so much for watching. First, you're going to remove your cabinet's door handles and knobs. Now, while your doors are still hanging, is the perfect time to drill hardware holes if you're going to add new hardware. I did a post on installing your hardware with a cabinet hardware jig to get perfect hole placement. So go and visit that post if you're adding new hardware to your cabinets and then come back to this point in the tutorial. After installing any new hardware, you're going to make a diagram of your cabinets. Assign each cabinet door and drawer a number, and this will help you later to know where those drawers go after we've painted our cabinets. Now, as you remove each door, remove the hinges and write the number from your diagram with a Sharpie in both hinge locations. Then stick a piece of painter's tape over each number. This will help the numbers to stay on the doors and intact uh, until we are finished painting. And we will just remove the painter's tape and then the hinges will cover those numbers. Also write the number on the back of the drawer fronts and an arrow showing which way is up. And now you'll want to fill in the old hardware holes as explained in the hardware post. Now it's time to sand the surface of the wood. I am scuff sanding with my electric sander. Uh, notice that I am uh, just barely sanding the surface to remove any shininess so that the primer sticks to the surface well. Again, we're not sanding off the old surface. We're just going over it real quick with the electric sander. And you might notice that the sanding pad that I have on my sander, which is actually a 120 grit sanding pad, is slightly bigger than my Black & Decker sander. And I did that on purpose so that I can get those edges really easily without having to get uh, a sanding sponge out to sand. Now we're going to degrease our cabinets to remove any residual dirt or oils from the surface. To do that, we're going to spray it with crud cutter and then scrub it with the rough surface of a sponge. And after we do this, we will wipe off the rest of the cleaner with a damp cloth with warm water. Thank you. 
And here's what your cabinet surface will look like after you've sanded and degreased. The next step is to add a grain filler, and this is especially helpful on cabinets with a deep wood grain like oak uh, because it fills in those pores and any unevenness because of the deep grain and just really updates the look of your cabinets and makes them look a lot more modern without completely removing the grain. You don't want to completely remove it because you don't want it to look like laminate, but I highly recommend it. So go to the post on adding a grain filler and it'll help you decide whether you want to add a grain filler to your cabinets or not. Here is a close up of without grain filler and with grain filler. And here's how it looks with the grain filler applied and sanded. Before we prime, be sure to visit the blog post to see what to put under your cabinet door so both sides can dry at the same time. We're going to use a brush to apply the primer and be sure to check out the supply list for the low cost brush I use that we can just throw away after using this oil based primer instead of having to wash it. It's low cost, but still leaves a smooth finish. So we're going to first get the indention of the trim and be sure to get in the corners well also. Now we're going to work on the center portion that's flat and I am brushing on the primer in the opposite direction of the grain. And after I brush it on in the opposite direction, I'm going to brush it with the grain. And what this does is helps the primer to get into the pores of the grain better to take another step to fill that grain even better. Be sure to remove any excess primer that collects in the corners. So your brush is ready to use without cleaning for the second coat. Stick it in a baggie and then put the baggie and brush in the refrigerator. Your brush will be all ready to use when it's time to prime again. Now that your primer is dry, you can sand with a 240 sanding pad. And I like to apply a little more muscle here because this is your last chance to really even out that grain. And you probably won't want to sand as much as I am here. I had to sand a little more because I had such a deep wood grain in my oak cabinets. I like to sand a little and then feel with my hand if it's smooth enough and keep sanding based on that. After you've sanded, use a brush to get in the corners of the trim to get any sanding dust and also wipe off the dust with a damp towel. And here's how your door will look after 
after being primed and sanded. Now you'll prime your doors one more time and sand again just like before. This time you can go a little bit lighter with the sander. Now that we are finally ready to paint, you'll use your zebra brush to first brush in the indentions and also make sure that there's no paint collected in the corner indentions. I'm using Benjamin Moore Advance after doing lots of testing on the best paint for cabinets and you can see that post in the description. You can always add more paint later, but thin coats is the secret to a really smooth finish on your cabinets. Now you'll use a roller on the flat areas. I'm using my roller to squeeze out the excess paint because once again, you want really thin coats even with the roller. So when you're done applying the paint with the roller, I like to go over the flat surfaces in one very light pass with my roller. This really gets the surface to be smooth and avoids any roller marks. And like I'm doing here, if a, a hair or something gets in the surface of your paint, just simply take it out and then re-roll that area. And here I'm just fixing that area where the hair was. And like I said, right at the end of your coat, go over it very, very lightly, and that'll really help smooth out the surface. Let the paint dry for 16 hours before sanding. And since this is our last time sanding, I'm going to use a sanding sponge or block to sand the edges because it's a lot smoother. And sometimes the electric sander can burn the edges. That means take off too much paint. And we don't wanna do that. We're just smoothing off at this point. So use your sanding sponge on the edges and use the electric sander with the 400 sanding pad on just on the flat surfaces. And go very lightly and keep feeling with your hand to see if the surface is smooth enough. And finally, we're doing the last coat of paint and do this with your zebra brush because this is the best way to get a super smooth final finish. When painting, always brush with the grain of the wood, especially right before you're done with that coat. At the end, be sure to wipe any drops of paint out of the corners so that the paint doesn't collect there. And you'll let this coat dry for 16 hours. And then if you see some places that are a little bit thin or you're not getting good coverage, you can just touch up those areas without having to do a full coat. And here's the final finish in Benjamin Moore Advanced Color Match to Sherwin-Williams Alabaster.